What's up, good people? How are you doing? How is it going? Well, uh, Bash Matumba back again with the Ugandan Juice Podcast. Well, thank you so much, every single person that supports this podcast, be it on Afripods or YouTube. You're the real, real MVP. And uh, I'm back with the biggest stories that have made headlines on the Ugandan entertainment scene in the Pearl of Africa 256. And uh, I'll just like to drive straight in. And um, we'll begin with the Ugandan shining, the Ugandans who are shining at the East Africa's Got Talent. You know, this is uh, the franchise part of the franchise of the good talent owned by samuel Cowell, and this is the east african version of it and uh, the pearl of africa is really shining it's unbelievable but the banana republic is just kicking the wrist down it's kicking them badly and uh, well it all started off easily with the first golden buzzer moment that we had with Lei Nakagere, the seven year old girl who really sang and blew the judges away and they had no option but to click that or hit that golden buzzer and uh, she was the very first one with a second i think the second gold buzzer that i had that i saw was it in the third episode yeah and then we also had uh, ezekiel and esther mutesa sira those two siblings that blew people away and um, i really think they should have done better if at all each one of them was singing on their own they decided to sing as a duo but they would have done better as independent acts honestly and gaetano actually noticed this as as they were singing and uh, came up to save the day and decided to um, show the rest of the world how good each one of them would have been alone and uh, other bands we had like dancers like the all eyes on us and other talents like the kid who was drumming like a young kid who was killed at drumming very impressive and uh, we're really really being represented very well i've seen also francis ojok who is a dancer and he has danced at the bigger stage before and uh, we are represented actually also on the platform of the MCs and the judges on the MCs we have and can see me who is doing great i love how uh, effortless she does her things how she comments when things are being done inside there very very nice and uh, also gaitano juko kagwa the, the, the son of the land omulangida well some people keep complaining about gaitano's attitude but really if I, you're the kind of person that doesn't understand gaitano then i don't know what you're talking about because I remember in 2000, early 2000s, not so sure, but right now I think when I checked it was 2003. I was still so young, but I would hear songs about Gaetano. Yeah, I think 2000, 2003 I was in um, P1, I guess. Yeah, P1, 2003, primary one. But you'd hear songs about Chameleon every time because, sorry, not Chameleon, Gaetano every time because Chameleon had a song, Amalaka, Amalako, Gaetano, Amalako. My baby cool had a song as well which was choka guy 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 gaitano ya singer like people were singing about gaitano as early as that he was very famous trust me back then it wasn't a simple thing being sung about by top artists like chameleon and uh, and baby cool but of course back then i didn't understand why and who gaitano was but right now when i uh, go to know the real story behind all that uh, i would say whoever doesn't respect gaitano's power it really doesn't know what they're talking about uh, well the fact is uh, gaitano was already a radio personality by that time and by then he was still studying law at Makere university in third year and he joined uh, big brother africa the very first episode of big brother africa in 2003 he was there and uh, he emerged as number four but the things he did inside the house just made him more famous than uh, even some of the winners would be he was like the highlight of the entire first episode even though he didn't win it because he even had the chance to get into big brother uk after winning a contest of making cocktails he went into big brother uk even though he did some crazy stuff in there uh, but uh, he came up as a hero trust me gaitano was welcomed like a hero when he was getting back from entebbe airport like entourage the entourages were up uh, waiting for him people were making lines on the streets waiting for him to come as if it was the queen or the pope or something like it was just crazy when you see those clips of him being welcomed and well what he uh, well i would say is still one of the the most um adept people to take this part up or the most worthy people for such a uh, a position is because he's been in the entertainment scene for really so long um first of all i'd say 
even worked in Kenya as well at Capital FM 90, uh, what is that frequency? It's 98.4, the Kenyan frequency, because we also worked at Capital FM Uganda 91.3, which is uh, before Big Brother, but even right now he's still working there. After Big Brother, he came back. He has worked at Studio 53 on MT on, on Mnet. Uh, well, he has been at various stages. He has seen how these things work. And uh, really, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. And uh, he, he grew up in Kenya, actually. He was born in Uganda. He went to Kenya at the age of five. Then he went to Lesotho at, at the age of, is it nine or seven? I'm not sure. He went to Lesotho. And he studied from there, finished high school. Then he went to uh, the USA. And uh, that's where he got his degree in political science. Then he came back to Makere and started to study uh, law. And uh, that's when he uh, he dropped out, I think. I don't, I don't think he graduated from law school. Because in year three is when Big Brother came up. And then he went to Big Brother. And then he came back and various things happened. But he's a very, very great great guy. Great personality. Currently he's um, also doing some acting. He's done some acting. And uh, he's been on TV also, Ugandan TV, Urban TV. Uh, he's now on some uh, NT- NBS TV program called Another Round UG with Marcus Kuchiriza. Well, uh, Gaetano is a really well-decorated guy in the entertainment scene, so really people should put respect on his name. Uh, but um, I'm, I'm really, really glad on the way we are being represented as a country, as the East Africa's Got Talent, and I hope we really win this because we really believe in you kids. Keep, keep making the Pearl of Africa proud. And uh, well, another story uh, is the fact that Sheila Gashumba and God's Plan decided to fake a breakup. I don't know whether they did it intentionally or something, but this was, it looked like a breakup, trust me, because it all started up uh, with Sheila, with God's Plan deleting all photos that have Sheila in them from his Instagram. That was the first step. And then Sheila unfollowed God's Plan on Instagram. That's how it was. You would search for the name God's Plan in Chilla's following and it wasn't there. Call Me God's Plan was unfollowed. And everyone was just automatically saying these guys have broken up. Either God's Plan has dumped or Sheila has dumped or whatever the case. But uh, later we just saw them, uh, mostly Sheila posting on her Snapchat showing off, Hey, me with my, with your dream boyfriend. I am here chilling with your dream boyfriend. I'm going home with your dream boyfriend. I'm having fun with your... The dream boyfriend being a God's plan, of course, and they were together in those Snapchat videos. And hey, she really talked about Ugandans, how bad they are, how evil they are, how uh, bad-hearted they are. They are. They want people to be breaking up and fighting all the time and stuff. But anyway, you keep wondering why they decided to play this game that way. It doesn't make sense to me anyway. But um, it's how they decided to do it anyway. And uh. uh Another story has been about her father, actually, Frank Gashumba, who is more of a political uh, a commentator and some guy that uh, influences people, of course, an influencer. And he says that people shouldn't be blaming him for the lifestyle of his child because if, if you've been following she, uh, Frank Gashumba for a while, he's so, so opposed to girls going in, into clubs every time and splashing money and doing that stuff and bragging about various things. But the same things he, he was being against for a very long time are the things that his daughter is doing lately. And according to him, all this is not supposed to be blamed on him because uh, he raised the child from the point she was born to the point she was 18 and the mother decided to take her away. And uh, that's why she's being a degenerate right now. According to him, that's what, she say, that, that's what he says. And that the lifestyle of Sheila shouldn't be blamed on him and that's why it doesn't match his values. Yeah, that's what he says. And then he went on to brag. You know, he was always bragging about the child from childhood. And there's actually a video that came out. Uh, Sheila was about, I think, 14 with the father. Both of them on TV and the dad showing off. Yeah, I want this child. You see her? I'm grooming her. I'm raising her to be the next president, you see. And he was so proud of him. That's why of her. That's why people would uh, share that video all over the place saying, ho, ho, this has really not aged well. This has aged badly. It's not aging well. But yeah, he, 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 keep, he keeps on feeling proud about the child and said, well, by the fact that you are discussing her and we are discussing her, it means she's better than you. you get she's better than you because, well, if she's not better than you, then why are you talking about her? If five or more people are talking about someone that doesn't know them, then she's better than them. And uh, he, he, he actually just turned it around and began to brag about the child. 
but um, in the end anyway he said that she will come back very soon to him well we hope so we hope he comes back to you mr frank and uh oh, on the other side mps are actually worried of getting pregnant because of Golala moses visiting parliament this would sound crazy to you but actually it's a fact one mp franka okelo uh it stood up and addressed the speaker that uh, honorable speaker rebecca Kadaga, well uh we've you've said Moses Gola is up in the gallery because Gola had come to visit the parliament. You know, it happens with they would bring people that are not members of parliament to come to the gallery and watch various things depending on the occasion. But yeah, Gola was in the gallery and the member of parliament showed her concern and said, Really, uh, we are scared with the women inside this house. We are scared that Gola might make us pregnant. <laughs> and you know, Gola always used to say he's the only man who can just look at a woman and she becomes pregnant. Yeah, that, that's one of the things he says uh, after or before his various fights. You could remember even in the current fight when he, when he realized that these jokes wouldn't work anymore, he, he just decided to do a stunt that shocked everyone, including his own promoter. He wanted to beat up his opponent at the press conference just like that. He pushed away the tables and did that. Gola is just a stunt man. He's a king at making stunts. So he's very famous for that line of saying he just looks the only man who looks at a woman and she becomes pregnant so this member of parliament was worried and complained to the speaker that really in a sarcastic way of course uh, that we are scared with the women in this house that we might just get pregnant and uh, the speaker actually also understood the joke miss Re uh, right honorable rebecca kadaga and she said well to the women all to, to all the women inside this house all i can tell you is do not stare at golola if you don't want to become pregnant <laughs> well that's how it happened that um, in the parliament in the house in the august house and uh well on a lighter and uh nicer note maurice curia maurice curia is actually going hard on film just like people have noticed jnl zamba jnl zamba left uganda and decided to go much into the hollywood scene of acting and holy and poetry and stuff and he's no longer rapping a lot apart from the albums that he's releasing that are not so much into the mainstream music that we understand as, as african small world music which appeals to uh, the foreign the white people maybe outside there so that's what general zamba is doing and maurice kira is also doing some kind of morphing he's no longer so f so much into the local market true even from the start he wasn't so much of a very mainstream artist because this kind of music um, guitar and stuff it was for a given class of people the, the topper class or upper class i would say it wasn't much for all the people but r r lately he's not so much into even the kind of audience he had back then uh, he's so reserved to a, a, a given clique I, I should say that's what most people claim at least and uh, lately he's actually also going hard on film he's he's doing a lot of um movies filming and stuff and uh well th this particular movie that's coming out is called back to the source and uh the talented Lukman Ali, who is the director of it, posted a photo showing Maurice Kiria and they're saying that this is the look that Maurice Kiria is pulling in this in this film. And the most unique thing or, or amazing thing about this film is that one famous Hollywood actor who is originally Ugandan or Ugandan born called Mbaho Mwine Ntare. Uh, if, if you've watched The Chai, that um, TV series called The Chai, you've, you've really seen him, he's called Mbaho Mwine Ntare. He was acting as the old man who uh, who was homeless and a drunkard and lost his son and decided to kill a kid or mistakenly or intentionally, I don't know, who, who decided to kill a kid um, after his son had died. Well, I don't remember the real character name from the movie The Chai, but um, he was there. He's called Mbaho Mwini Ntari, one of the first Ugandans to be at, uh, at one of those American big shows, either the Wendy Williams show or or Ellen DeGeneres I don't remember very well but he was one at one of those shows and he was the first very first Ugandan Mbaho Mwini Ntari so he's acting in this particular movie by Lukman Ali and Maurice Kira is also acting in it and he showed off uh, the photo that Maurice Kira is acting as like the look he has in the, in the film and actually Maurice also posted earlier a photo of him with his beards and stuff and uh, saying that he's 
changing the look for a movie and definitely that's the movie that he's talking about even though he didn't mention it uh, he he posted a photo and captioned it thus countdown to beard removal film roll yeah he, he put it as film roll hashtag listen if i was to act as someone with a beard who would you want me to act as below are some names then he started black jesus with laughing emojis uh, black gandalf laughing emoji taurus riley idris elba black santa with a laughing emoji as well then coffee cerebral savimbi morgan heritage guy then he put brackets don't know the name i mean here yeah, the morgan heritage guy he meant was gramps morgan if i'm not mistaken add more names and um, some guy in the comments even said it's marvin gay that you look like anyway uh that was maurice Kira. and what i've noticed about maurice actually is that he's getting back his bald look no hair on his head lately when you look at most of his instagram photos the newest instagram photos he has no hair he's taking on the bald look if you remember very well when he had just released the book of kiria album which had songs like um mulembe gwa kiria and actually it's in the video the same video of mulembe gwa kiria you'd see him getting a, a haircut and chopping off all his dreads he had those nice dreads from the times of uh bagalalina or what's the song called with ay what's the title bagalalina uh-huh, uh-huh. again do call him the title is um binadamu yes binadamu is the title featuring ay and hmd uh from that time from the time of boda boda marish kira is the kind of guy who always had those short dreads that looked very great but he decided to chop off and have that bald look from um omolembe guakiria and after that he also got back his hair his hair and then later he has also decided to go back to the bold look once again but yeah i really have great memories with Mo- with maurice kira personally he taught me how to tune my guitar the first time we met i think back then he used to have a coffee uh, restaurant or a cafe i would say and uh, i went there to just have some coffee and i went with my guitar i wanted to meet him he was my idol you know uh, back then in my form for vacation i used to love a lot of more square music and uh, they are very the very songs i learned to play on guitar when i was just learning and he told me how to tune my guitar very happy day that was ever since then they it's an amazing thing i never miss his shows i never do anything but anyway uh, he's still great at music and he has a new album it's called free dreams yeah free dreams album even though most people think he's not producing music he is uh, the problem is he's not so much uh, into the mainstream thing a lot doing a lot of uh, music to sell to or to, to take to uh, music stations and stuff no he's just doing it mainly for the digital audience they're the ones that really consume it and his loyal fans that still go and watch his shows because uh, maurice curia shows at one one hundred thousand ordinary imagine a hundred thousand and they fill up vip uh, could be like four hundred thousand five hundred and or three hundred thousand and then a, t- a table would be at one million to four million but still people fill up the places so mercury still has his loyal fan base and uh well uh, i'm glad and i can't wait to see this film coming up really i really would love to watch this film maho mwine and maurice kiria in one movie and made by the very very talented lukman ali dang this would be a great great flick and i'd like to really watch it when it's out and um, i hope lukman actually gets deals with things like netflix and i hope muinentari also links him up to hollywood and stuff yeah well uh, another story around is the fact that irene tally has signed with universal music yeah universal music group under universal music nigeria and well it's great because uh, he has, she has also stopped being silent you know she went silent ever since she went to nigeria or west africa she's been there for a long time and people were like, were like oh what's up with irene she has flopped so much she's not she's no longer releasing music well she has come up with a bang with a musical song called nyamba and she has come both physically and musically she came back with a the general manager of universal music nigeria to kampala together with him and uh, in that masterpiece actually uh it she is trying to appeal to her lover to help her believe in her love for him because nyamba means help me in luganda and uh, it's more of uh, a fusion of english and luganda and uh, until has fused actually styles from the east and west of africa because the song was even produced by um a great nigerian producer 
called uh, Marcel Akungwata and he's the same guy that did the backup vocals in the intro and some parts of the uh, of the song well uh, it's a very great day for Irene and i think uh, the, the touch the west african touch in the song explains why he signed she signed to universal music nigeria which is a subsidiary to universal music group and uh, actually to a savage is signed to universal music group very recently so yeah i believe it's a great deal for irene Tale, and uh, it's arguably the biggest music company in the world no doubt about that and uh, well on the modest beat that was prepared by that talented guy Marcel Akungwata who also did backup vocals actually uh, Irene actually pulled off great vocals that prove that she has matured uh, musically over the years like she keeps morphing for the better and uh, we hope she actually produces more music now that she has broken the silence we really hope she produces more music Vink a good sign to Sony recently and I remember back then I wasn't so happy about that yeah I said I don't trust foreign labels since they usually just make people fall like everyone who gets signed to them just flops but um, I've heard that Natalia's deal is a little different it's not just distribution it includes production and other things and uh, the fact that she signed to the Nigerian one and you know how big Nigeria is in this uh, industry really i really hope she's going to get favors that most nigerian artists enjoy and uh, anyway either way i also have a very soft spot for irene tally so i would never think of anything negative about her well i don't think and i don't hope it will happen that she, she will flop just because she has been signed to a, a foreign label mm -hmm. yeah i really hope she gets so lucky with everything she's doing and uh, well on a funnier side of the things well fresh daddy has opened up a saloon and uh, he has rubbed shoulders with baby cool you would remember that recently when he was performing at a show uh, he got pelted with bottles and was being booed off the stage and he decided to just keep on singing and when asked later why he never left the stage he said no people paid to come and watch me so whoever threw the bottles didn't come to watch me maybe those are just crazy guys and it's no more even baby cool got beaten on the stage well if you remember at a show uh songs all star the one the one that had taras riley last year baby cool got pelted with bottles and he didn't even perform people refused him from performing adamantly and you know how big it is twenty thousand people in a in Lugogo cricket oval it was just crazy he couldn't just keep on when every single person was just booing him off and throwing him throwing uh, bottles at him and stuff he just didn't sing why because of his political stance he was against Bobby Wine and back then is when Bobby Wine had been imprisoned yeah and held for various things of course political reasons and being uh, accused of holding guns which was later uh, dropped but yeah things happen anyway well uh, fresh daddy actually argued that uh, baby cool faced it so it's not a big deal and they met actually and uh, it was nice for fresh daddy it was nice for him to rub shoulders with baby cool and you've heard that he has opened up a saloon and someone actually joked that he would have just opened up a saloon in the first place and not produce uh, fake music for ugandans because they don't like to listen to it but people actually are listening to him yeah they don't care and uh, anyway that's all from me today thank you very much for listening uh, if you found this interesting please give me a thumbs up give me a comment or any of that it makes a lot of sense and you could subscribe too yeah and keep uh following again and just podcast till then sayonara